Good evening and welcome to the April 5th meeting of the City Council's Economic Development Committee. I now call the meeting to order. Please be advised that FATV is conducting audio and video recording of this meeting for public broadcast. I ask that anyone else in the audience who is recording this meeting to please identify themselves for the record now by standing and stating their name and address. Don't see anybody. At this time, I ask that all electronic devices be placed into silent mode. Um, tonight we have Councilors Fleming, Schultz, Dean Natale, myself, Van Hazaga, and Squalia here in attendance. Um, the members of the public are invited to come forward if they wish to speak on any item uh, for not more than two minutes. We don't have any prepared statements or anybody registered to participate remotely. Would anyone like to participate in any, make comments uh, on any items? All right. Uh, seeing no one, I'll move on to our agenda. Uh, we're going to go a little bit out of order. We're going to start with order 3222 concerning a um, memorandum of agreement between the City of Fitchburg and the Twin Cities Rail Trail Association regarding the roles and responsibilities of each party to maintain the new trail as outlined in the attached order. And with us I have uh, Director of Community Development, uh, Mr. Tom Skorowski and uh, Mr. Larry Casasa. Good evening, councillors, and um, thank you for hearing this matter. Um, the, the issue in front of you is an MOU developed between the Twin Cities Rail Trail Association, um, a volunteer-led group focused on the maintenance of the Twin City Rail Trail, comprised of um, both city officials in uh, Lemonster and Fitchburg, but also volunteers from both cities. Um, this MOU reflects a joint commitment to maintain the trail between the cities and this volunteer-led organization. Um, this was developed after consultation with both city um, departments involved in Lemonster and Fitchburg involved in the maintenance, whether, you know, DPW, police, um, community development and planning, or my counterpart in Lemonster. Um, and it reflects shared responsibilities, so just to outline them briefly, on the city side, um, it just clarifies that um, rubbish disposal, cleanup um, assistance in major cleanup events, um, support for fundraising, depositing revenues into a, a maintenance fund held by the Twin City Rail Trail Association, and at least for our part on the city side, we, receive, we will receive revenues from two billboards um, in 2025 from there on forward that we could then utilize for maintenance of the rail trail, um, but we would pass that through to the Rail Trail Association to handle those maintenance obligations. Um, and then we would allow for the Rail Trail Association to create rules governing the use of the trail and make physical improvements after consulting with um, the Department of Public Works in each respective city. So those are the city obligations on the side of the Rail Trail Association, um, mowing within a, a, you know, a three foot area on either side of the trail, plowing um, the trail if both cities deem that to be something that they would like to do. Um, and at, that, at this point in time, that's still sort of a, a topic for debate and conversation. Um, supporting regular cleanup efforts, whether big cleanups, um, like what we often see during the ward cleanups in, in the spring and summer, or smaller scale ones with members of the association. And then just a commitment uh, to control vegetative growth outside of the mowing boundaries and just generally keeping in communication and consultation with the cities as they go throughout the process. Um, so hopefully everyone has seen the donation campaign that kicked off with the association with a $50,000 donation um, just this past uh, in, late winter from the Romulo Testermata Fund. Foundation, yes. Great. Um, and then in addition to that, they've received support from various private sector groups. Um, local Roots on Lunenburg Street is one that provided support and, and they're continuously seeking to get additional funding to expand their impact and I'd encourage anyone in the public who's interested in donating to go to TwinCitiesTrail.com where they can have more information on how to donate. Um, and I'm joined here tonight by the chair of the Twin City Rail Trail Association, Larry Casasa, um, who in addition to helping to support this uh, private sector effort, of course, as my predecessor brought us here today to get this trail developed in the first place. Um, so he certainly knows a thing or two about rail trails in this one in particular. Um, so happy to take any questions, but I'll, I'll also defer to Larry if you've got any additional comments. Well, I guess I'd prefer just to answer questions as they come up, other than point out that um, we recognize that on one hand, both cities have gotten this wonderful asset 
that can have a lot of positive uh, impacts on both cities. Um, but on the other hand, we're fully cognizant of the fact that neither city really has the resources with their, within their existing budgets and Department of Public Works to ensure the ongoing daily care and maintenance. And so that's why this is an ideal opportunity, I think, for a friends of or citizens groups between the two cities um, to try to help fill that role. And that's why before we can really begin the process of raising the funds we'll need to, to make sure that we have an endowment that's large enough to cover the cost of maintenance as we would estimate in perpetuity, rather than have to go out every year and just depend on individual volunteers to continue that effort for multiple years into the future, that having a fund that would be sufficient to generate the revenue necessary just by the interest to help cover the annual expected costs would be a wonderful asset. And we've been approached by a lot of civic organizations and a lot of businesses already before we've even approached them asking us about the roles they might play. So we're hoping to build on that goodwill and develop a program that will enable us to ensure that this trail will be well maintained and well kept and that people will really be able to enjoy it. Thank you. I think uh, everyone has watched the, the trail going in and I'm personally very excited about it. I think it's going to be a great amenity and I'm also very excited <coughs> that there's a plan in place to maintain it and make sure it stays in good shape and continues to be an asset. Uh, Councilor Diantelli. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You gentlemen probably know, I know, I know you know this. I mean, you touched upon it just now about the concerns about the maintenance of this trail. Those concerns were aired way in the beginning of this whole process before any money was even appropriated by the state for this type of effort. And it's one of those instances where we, it, it's unfortunately a wait and see approach. The trail's already in, people are using them, using it. So it's a wait and see approach in, in respect to if there is an issue on the trail, how quickly do we resolve it? And by issue, I could, that could mean any sort of things, but when I, th this is the same line of questioning or concern we have when we put a new park in. You know, we've already got so many areas of coverage and the resources are not enough now to cover that whole swath of uh, track that we are responsible for doing maintenance on. Um, community engagement assists here and there, but you know, it, it's not reliable, it's not consistent. So some of the concerns that some of my colleagues have expressed in the past is with the creation of this association or this friends, will that, we, ho we hope that that will stay a very active group in perpetuity and that, because in some instances in the past with other situations, in the beginning, the first couple of years, there was a lot of interest and, and, and volunteerism in cleaning up those areas. And then it started to wane over time and less and less people were performing those duties. And then it, and it ultimately either fell upon the city 100% or more than we would have liked. Um, so I'm not saying it's gonna happen here. And I'm actually encouraged that Mr. Casas is the head of this organization because with his extensive experience working for this city, he knows better than anyone what I'm speaking of. Right. And how important it is that if there is problems along the trail that this organization can address quickly and expeditiously, I hope they do so. And not receive phone calls or emails from constituents who use the park, the trail, you know, trash barrels are overflowing, you know, this needs to be mowed. And I think you gentlemen said that in the agreement, we will be responsible in tandem with Lemonster for needs requiring plowing gr or grass cutting, or is that, no? no the, the, the association will assume those responsibilities. Okay. The city will use their rubbish contractor yep. to clean the trash barrels. Okay. So that's the one thing that we wouldn't be directly involved with. Okay. And, and they would, um, take on the responsibility of plowing the trail if the cities deemed that was something we would like to pursue and if we had a funding mechanism it, in it's place. It's got to be fiscally prudent. Right. To do right. That. I, I would, anything the association will do that we won't have to do, right. I'm all in favor of. Right. I know we're probably going to be playing a support role. Right. Um, but if it's right now, the plan or the goal is to just focus more on the trash, and that means our contracts, so waste management would be responsible for this. 
Correct. It wouldn't today. be the DPW like they do on Main Street where they, uh, you know. Right. Okay. And, and, and I think since we're talking about rubbish removal along the trail, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the state of the trail today. Um, I just want to make clear that isn't reflective of the city's lack of commitment or the Twin City Rail Trail's lack of commitment. People are using the trail today, but it's not technically open to the public until the end of June, and it is under the jurisdiction of the construction company working on the trail. We can't bring volunteers on the trail. We can't, we can't bring city officials on the trail to clean it until it's ours. Um, it's a liability issue. So I just want to make that clear. We're all committed to the trail, and, and certainly because we don't own it today, um, or at least during construction, we've been pushing the state to, before the trail is open, clean up all the rubbish, of which there is quite a bit. This was a, a you know abandoned for 50 plus years, so there, there's a lot of um, evidence of that abandonment, let's say. Um, so we've been pushing really hard when that trail opens that we're starting on a clean slate. Just I'm assuming that once it opens, the association will probably have a like a massive effort to start to go the span of that area and a volunteer exactly. effort to really, really clean up a lot of that stuff before it's used. And then, you know, hopefully it never gets to that point again. Right. Uh, so our contractor waste management, they're already, they're all set with going that length of the trail to, or, or what is Lemonster's contractor does their part of it. And we, so there is a dividing line between the two cities. That's correct. And, and, Last question I had, um, Lemonster, correct, has more uh, feet or, or mileage of trail than we do, right? Isn't most of this trail in? It is close to 50%. It's, close it's to not 50, that 50? much. It, Lemonster okay. does have a, a slightly higher percentage. If I had to guess, I'd say 55, 45, or something like that. I think but what I, I think it's what pretty, confused, pretty close. I, think what I just thought of it. What confused me is, no, I got that wrong. It's probably 50. It is 50-50. I, I, I was thinking more on the eminent domain piece. Oh, yeah. I remember when we were going through it, they had far more hurdles with right. eminent domain than we did. Much more challenging. Okay, so that's me. where I got mixed up. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, and uh, I will support this. It, it's almost as if, you know, there, there's no alternative. This is how we have to approach this. I just, it's a wait and see approach. I just, I, I hope that the association will step up when needed and I have every confidence they will with you at the helm because you recognize the shortfalls we have as a city in terms of maintenance of parks. So any assistance we can get from you folks, you know. Well, we've got a 100%. great group of representatives right now from the two cities and we have a couple at large positions as well. And as Tom mentioned, each mayor has one appointee as well. Mm -hmm. So the group is well represented <clears throat> now. But the, but the issue that you mentioned that's been an issue for decades, or as long as we've been working with the city, is certainly a very valid one because sometimes a friends group or a group that, that agrees to take responsibility for maintaining a park is only as good as the people who make that initial commitment. Right. And as their lives change, right. who fills the void when they're no longer doing it is the concern, right? Correct. Um, and so that's why we're being very mindful of the fact that we need to continually promote engagement by the community, get younger people involved on our board, and make sure that they understand what needs to be done. And the rest of it, we're hoping, will run itself. Because if we're successful working through the Community Foundation, which is holding our fund, if we're successful with our fundraising campaign, and we have some small amounts coming in from leases from the two cities, that we will have a perpetual fund. Then the burden is a lot less, because you have contracted services. We've already gotten bids now to do um, raking the uh, planting beds in the fall, cutting the grass, and doing all the basic maintenance, and we're getting other quotes. If we have sufficient funds to cover those costs, then the burden is less on any one individual to keep things going. You just have to maintain the contracts, make sure that the fund is being properly managed, and organize volunteer events and other community events around the trail. That's kind of what we're hoping will happen here. Thank you. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Squally, uh, Squally, did you have a comment? Yes. Thank you uh, so much, Tom and Larry, for uh, this memorandum, memorandum of understanding for the Twin City Rail Trail. Uh, I'm very excited for it to open in June. <coughs> excited to ride it. Um, and I read through the uh, MOU, and it looks great. I really appreciate the work that the Twin City Rail Trail Association will be doing in partnership with the cities. Uh, I have a, just a couple questions. Small question. Uh, one of the points 
that the Twin City Rail Trail agreed to follow was to approve and coordinate any special events uh, on the trail. And so I just was wondering how that uh, would coordinate with, like, for example, if there's an event in the city of Fitchburg that has more than 40 people or 60 people, then it requires a public assembly permit or a public assembly form that needs to be filled out. Those kinds of things within the city. And it's not explicitly <coughs> spelled out. It more says that the Twin City Rail Trail will approve and coordinate. So I think the goal there would be to work through the public assembly Form process at which you know various departments are informed, and um, to Larry's point, the mayoral appointment at least today is um, Amy LeBlanc, who's our senior project manager within my office. So I think when um, those public assembly forms are submitted, there's kind of triggers to department heads about the process, and, and that's I think where we would trigger that internal approval, and, and then I think in that case, Amy would bring it to the association to help coordinate the process. Yeah, I think we'd serve as a clearinghouse more than anything else right. for situations like that because the two jurisdictions and they each probably have their own rules. So we would we would basically try to facilitate and make sure that events like that are coordinated so that there's no conflicts and that everyone understands the basic rules for use of the trail. Very helpful. Thank you. And so my final question really is um, regarding when the trail opens, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of, um, hey, Sam, there's a downed tree on the trail. What do I do? Uh, you know, there's graffiti, there's, this trash can is overflowing, there's litter, I don't know, whatever. How, how exactly do I report these concerns to the Twin City Rail Trail Committee and or the city? Uh, I know through reading this that, for example, if there's a trash <coughs> can that's located in Fitchburg that is overflowing, that goes to the city of Fitchburg. But if there's other issues, how do I report them to the Twin City Rail Trail Association? That's a very good question, especially coming from a counselor who's gonna hear, be the first to hear complaints like that. And I, I would have to say that we're, we're gonna be, need to be responsible for creating a central point of contact, for at least for you, to be able to contact. Now, we're all volunteers, none of us get paid a salary, but to serve as a focal point we will have a committee responsible for maintaining the contracts that we have for cleanup <clears> of graffiti, for any of the issues that may come up if there's a down tree. So we would provide you with that information, that contact point, so that you have a direct line into uh, making sure that the work gets addressed. And then I think, you know, continuing to encourage folks to use C Click Fix, and that could have its own internal triggers to just staff liaisons to the association as well. So I think a multi pronged approach would be helpful here. Maybe, you know, within the C Click Fix, um, you know, options, uh, a Twin City Rail Trail option, pull down an issue right. with the Twin City Rail Trail could be an you, option. You have to for... associate an address to it, right? Mm -hmm. Or it might be helpful to have that as its own distinct entity. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Fleming. Thank you. Um, Councillor Di Natale did address some of the issues that I had, but I have some more um, on a safety measure type of issue. Um, are we going to have any type of patrolling of the rail trail, whether it be law enforcement, maybe riding a uh, motorcycle up and down, checking to see what's going on? Um, and. Uh, I know there's been issues on some other rail trails that I know of the past, and um, these are my concerns. I don't want to really put out what happened. I will really talk to you about that in private, if that's okay. But I was wondering if we have any anything in that. Well, we, we have met a couple times with the, uh, both police chiefs, and they have expressed their concerns. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of a, there are pros and cons to the situation because historically there have been some concerns along the abandoned corridor. And some of those we think will be addressed by the fact that it's be, being used now by people on a regular basis. So you don't carry out activities in private that might be going on or have gone on in the past because CSX Railroad, which owned it before, really was an absentee owner. They really were not involved at all mm -hmm. in policing their own trail. So at least some of that will happen. And, um, you know, it's going to be a work in progress. I can't anticipate exactly what's going to happen. I think the first three or four years, it's going to be a bit more of a challenge in Fitchburg, simply because that second phase of the project that's going to connect the trail to the intermodal station isn't going to be complete 
until the second phase of the project. And so the, the Fitchburg end is gonna sort of reach a dead end as you enter the, um, the old patch neighborhood, right. you know, around Fifth Street. So initially at least, because it's, it's kind of a dead end, I think we're gonna be, need to be especially mindful of that and try to keep it clean and keep it well policed. And um, Chief Martin is well aware of that. We're gonna work as cooperatively as we can with him. But I realize it, it, it's something, it's a burden that the department has always dealt with in the past. Right. And I don't know that this necessarily changes it for the better or the worse. <clears throat> Any thought of maybe putting cameras up and just- There's been discussion of that as well. And there may be a few that will be put up. Okay. And, and we're looking at phase two with strategic locations where we have sort of camera and or call boxes installed. Um, and, and a lot of lighting. So there, we, we have conduit for lighting throughout the stretch of phase one um, that was installed to, to at least allow us to install lighting at our own discretion at a later date. Um, it's not something that MassDOT traditionally funds um, with rail trail projects, but um, it is something they'll be taking on with phase two. And Chief Marno has been really helpful thinking through and problem solving some of these issues. I know um, he's working within his department to see if, if they can even get some ATVs that could travel along the trail to do some more sort of controlled policing. But, but to Larry's point as well, we talk a lot about crime prevention through environmental design. So, you know, removing all the vegetative growth so you can actually have clear sight lines, um, making sure people are regularly using the trail. We call that, you know, kind of having eyes on the street. So, Hopefully there's a little bit of self-policing involved to the more people that are using the trail, the more people that are owning the trail. And, um, you know, I think the more people we can get to utilize it, the better it's gonna be. I, I do agree there's gonna be some rough patches for the first phase until the second phase is opened up because that's what's really gonna make the trail functionally work for the city. Okay, just one more question. This is more of a comment. Um, I know that the Department of Correction is now um, having inmates come back out into the community and help clean. Is there any thought as to maybe recruiting some of that type of help? Absolutely. Uh, once we can actually get on the trail, um, which we, we are not allowed to yet, but, but I, we push the state that basically if they can't take care of these massive, the massive cleanup effort that we need in advance of the trail opening, what we would ask is when they're done with their scope of work that we have a period of time where we have volunteer groups and we have these other organizations come out and do what's really needed to give a whole scale cleanup. We don't wanna cut a ribbon with the trail in the state that it is today. And I think that will be a good resource to look into um, before we do open up. All right, thank you. I'm You're excited. Welcome. Councilor Schultz. Thank you, uh, Councilor Van Hazinger. Uh, <clears throat> just to follow up on Councilor Dean Natale's uh, questions, I was just wondering, what is the breakdown as, as far as Fitchburg, as far as footage goes uh, of the trail, and have you got an estimate on what it might cost to maintain it on a yearly basis? Well, we've actually already put together um, a request for quotations and gone out to several local landscaping contractors who had the capacity to do the full nine yards of work that we were looking to have done, and we've gotten bids back um, so we know what the cost will be to deal with all of the uh, work that we talked about, as well as the option of plowing it in the winter. Um, so we have a good handle on that, and the scope of work does include, as Tom mentioned, at least once a year cutting back any overgrowth off the sides of the trail that could otherwise be obscure people's vision. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a clear line of vision throughout the trail. So th that's where we are with it right now. We do have the, uh, we did get, uh, one quote that was was right within the ballpark of what we were hoping. Um, so it's really a question of now raising the necessary funds to pay for it every year. But we're certainly good for the time being when we initially take over. Um, and we've been approached by a lot of, as Tom mentioned, we several civic organizations and a couple of church groups who've all said, look, we want to make this a project for us. Let's talk about what role we can play each year. So that's going to really lighten the load, I think. What, what's the figure that you're looking for for a perpetual fund that you talked about earlier? Is it um, we, we have, we have, we think potentially up to a half a million dollars, assuming we would generate about 4% a year from that fund, which is typically what the community foundation would tell you to expect mm -hmm. as a group. That would generate, you know, $20,000 a year. Right now, we're looking at costs based on our bid if we include snow plowing 
of just under that amount. Um, but we can back out of that number any of the lease revenues that the two cities are able to generate. So we wouldn't need to raise as high an endowment if um, we're getting five or $6,000 a year from the leasing of a billboard in Fitchburg or the leasing of parking for an adjacent condominium development in Lemonster. So we're hoping that will reduce the, the total amount we need to a lower amount than that. Um, because that's a tough number to reach because there are a lot of worthy causes in these cities and, uh, but, but at the same time we think there's a lot of support and that we will be able to raise a substantial amount of funding. The other question I had was about the, your volunteer base. How, how large is your volunteer base at this time? Uh, you know, uh, as you said, the volunteers come and go and, uh, you know. They do. Well, the, the group itself will meet regularly and will oversee the regular maintenance. Volunteers will be on a basis of either a commitment from church groups to do annual cleanups or, or other groups or events that we organize by working with those groups. We did actually try to do a, an initial cleanup at the contractor's request while the work was underway about a year ago until their lawyers decided that, well, no, because we're liable for any injuries that could occur, we don't actually want you on the site. But before that happened, we had over 100 people committed to showing up in the two cities who were just eager to get out there and, and start picking up trash. So that's a very positive sign. Yeah, that's a positive sign, yeah. Thank you, Larry. All right. Anybody else have any further questions or comment? Move to approve 03222. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, passes. We have another item on our, our agenda tonight a um, petition concerning proposed changes to the zoning ordinance. Uh, this was heard by the planning board last month and then. Following that was heard by the Legislative Affairs Committee. Uh, following some re uh, revisions to the proposed changes made by community development uh, following the planning board meeting. Uh, planning board has communicated they would like to review those and talk about them again. So at this time I would ask that we hold this petition so that planning board can discuss it again and that we can get the, their final comment before we make any decision. Motion so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. So that concludes our agenda tonight. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, any, any opposition? All right. It's unanimous. And I would invite anybody, everybody to stay for the city council meeting that will be following in just a few minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you.